session, I'd like to introduce um, Bronwyn Wood to you and Mika Homolia, who are both at Victoria University. Bronwyn is a senior lecturer in education there and is currently involved in a research project on young people and participation in citizenship. Uh, so this project is part, I believe, of a, of a bigger uh, project and Mika is working as a master's student with her on this project. So you've seen the title along here, Cultural Festivals as Counter Spaces, Ethnic Minority, Youth Identities and Solidarities in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, thanks very much, uh, Bronwyn and Mika, for joining us today. We're very happy to have you and really looking forward to your talk. Great, thank you, Jessica. We'll kick off. Can everyone hear us okay and see the screen, see our PowerPoint screen somewhere? Yep. Tell me if there's any problems and we'll try and fix it. So, kia ora koutou. my name's um, Bronwyn Wood. I've um, been involved previously in a lot of research with youth citizenship and one of the areas which I became aware of was that uh, we didn't really know enough about um, very diverse young people growing up in New Zealand and this was a growing phenomena with the type of um, recent migration patterns that we've had. Um, so I've got a Marsden Fast Start looking at young people in some of those most culturally diverse communities in New Zealand. Mostly the researchers in Auckland in schools and one in Wellington. But one thing that became very important very early on the research was cultural festivals. So I recruited um, Mika here to, to research as her master's that as a specific focus as part of the broader study. So this is our first um, presentation today on these ideas and we're very much looking forward to some feedback because it's quite a new area for us to move into. So Mike, what you're doing um, would be very, very interesting to hear from as well a bit later. Um, I'll let Mika introduce herself now too. Um, I am Mika Homoya and um, I'm working with Bonwell on this um, project. My um, my involvement in this is quite personal. I, um, I am from a Serbian background. I came here when I was 11 years old and I've found community and belonging through performance groups, specifically through um, poly, um, poly clubs and through um, involvement in Kapahaka. So it was very important to me to have this kind of research um, happen. And it's been, Ronald and I have been um, wondering why it hasn't been happening this this whole time. So our focus is on um, on cultural representation, specifically at um, at festivals, and we're looking at um, performance as a site for um, for the inscription and the creation of citizenship, of solidarity, of um, belonging and uh, representation um, and I'm focusing in particular on, on festivals. Yeah. Cool, thank you Mika. We'll get started. We want to um, talk today about, uh, let me just get this, I think I just have to move the mouse, um, about cultural festivals and the role that they play for the mobilization of group identities, which is Apadura's um, quote there, and in particular in the context of diaspora and minority people in transnational and super diverse contexts. So cultural festivals are increasingly common in New Zealand and the diversity of population as is expanded, so have cultural festivals, um, which is partly why we're very interested. However, surprisingly little is known about what these mean for ethnic minority youth. And we're using that term to encompass at the broadest level, um, the multiple groups which are represented through these festivals. Um, and what role festivals play in helping young people navigate their affinities and belonging in both the host um, nations and in their homelands. So this study is part of a much broader study about that navigation into New Zealand society um, for young people in super diverse communities. Um, so that's where we're heading today. We're going to talk about three youth cultural festivals. So there's many cultural festivals such as Pacifica, um, in Auckland that represent um, adults largely and whole communities, sometimes a cross-section of communities. We were particularly focusing in on 
young people's festivals. So these are mostly occur through schools and schools encourage and promote um, young people to attend these. So the largest one was the ASB um, Polyfest, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then two smaller ones we were able to visit within the Wellington region that were school-based festivals were Tutangata, um, which is a, a smaller one for about eight schools. And it's just a performance at the Michael Fowler Centre. And then the Northern Regional Polyfest, which is for the um, Polyloa Basin schools, which is another about eight schools are involved in. Um, so they're quite unique. and we attended those two in the audience, um, and you'll hear mostly doing ethnographic type of work. Um, but the ASB Polyfest um, was of particular interest to us, so we navigated the ethics of arriving into that. Um, for those that don't know, the ASB Polyfest represents um, a four-day school festival of culture uh, that involves approximately 100,000 people and 10, nine or 10,000 of them are performers. Um, so this is the largest school-based festival in the world for Pacific um, young people. Um, and this year there was people from as far as Hawaii and um, Niue arriving to perform at this festival as well. So um, the Victoria University uh, was the sponsor of the diversity stage this year, and that helped us navigate ethical access to the festival. Um, and with permission of both our own university and with um, the director of ASB Polyfest, we were allowed to conduct research in that space only. Um, so the diversity stage is a new and growing phenomena of ASB Polyfest. The Polyfest initially was started in 1978 in Hillary College in Otara with just a handful of schools. And it was started by um, Pacific elders who were concerned about the loss of culture um, and the loss of traditional practice of culture. So they established this for a very small group of schools and it has grown from there to this massive festival that it is today. So the diversity stage um, is a new phenomenon that occurred for young people outside of the traditional Polynesian group. So at this year, ASB Polyfest had Samoa and Tonga, Nguyen, Cook Island and Kapahaka stages. And the diversity stage was the sixth stage um, and had the most number of performances. It had 85, representing 27 ethnic groups, um, of which the largest were Indian. 19 Indian groups performed, 11 Chinese, um, 8 Filipino, 7 Fijian, and then a number of pan-ethnic um, performances as well, which we'll talk about. Um, so that was our... Um, ability to be at that space with um, Victoria's close involvement as well was was a big help there. Um, so we know that cultural festivals have been studied before and particularly we acknowledge the work of Jared Mackley Crump who has talked about the um, festivalization of Polynesian culture in Aotearoa primarily using the Pacifica Festival in Auckland um, to do his research there um, and he talked particularly about how cultural festivals form a point of community building through the both the process of enacting the performance and also the process of attending, including all the audience members as well, the food and everything that goes with it. So we were particularly interested in school-based cultural festivals and schools have a very interesting role to play here and a growing role in fact um, with the diversity of cultures represented in New Zealand. Um, and we some previous work on Kapahaka by um, Ruby Davis has talked about the role that Kapahaka plays for young people to, um, to assert their identity, to build community and to gain school success with some of the research suggesting that if you participate in a um, cultural uh, festival and performance based um, identity group, you will actually enhance your academic output. So there's um, a couple of studies that have actually um, talked about that previously. Um, the work of Fairburn Dunlop um, earlier about the Poly Club um, is another example of a study done in New Zealand of just one school and the role that this um, played in the school to provide a safe space to affirm identity and maintain cultural traditions. Um, and one um, uh, research of Diwali by Johnson talked about how in the diasporic um, identities of young people, a performance at Diwali and the like also creates new diasporic identities in the new land where these um, young people are from. So we were using that as our background um, ideas 
um, before we went into the research which we're talking about today. So we're going to focus in on the concept of solidarity. We're using this um, from a sociological tradition primarily and then bridging that into a more anthropological tradition of how this enacts itself within cultural performance. Um, but the idea of solidarity, um, um, Mika will explain to in a, minute, in a minute why it emerged, but it became a very big point of interest to us to the kind of bonds and affiliations that form both within ethnic groups and across ethnic groups at these festivals. So solidarity derives um, originally from um, biblical times and then used as an idea to talk about groups of people such as monks that held together a form of solidarity. Um, but Durkheim was one of the first to kind of analyze this more theoretically. And so he talked about original ideas of solidarity as a mechanical solidarity, which was the bonds formed through a very homogenous group, and then organic solidarity, which was strategic forms of alliance that he found mostly um, were related to the division of labor. For example, a group of people that plowed the fields together formed a solidarity together um, was how Durkheim first saw it. Um, so we wanted to take these ideas we've kind of redefined them, we'll show you in a minute, to enact a type of solidarity that we thought we started to observe and the students talked about within cultural festivals. So we wanted to look at how solidarity could then uh, be a way to encourage a kind of, a kind of transformative space um, that performances allowed um, to enact different types of solidarity. Um, and we'll introduce the idea of festivals as a counter space um, outside mainstream society as well for new solidarities to develop. So Mick is going to um, take over now to describe um, the methods we used and how we conducted the research. Okay, so now we'll introduce um, some of our methodology. Um, our research um, approach at the cultural festival was um, primarily festivals. Plural, um, was primarily ethnographic. Um, the aim of our approach was uh, for us as researchers to be present in the space and to be able to experience events and um, meanings in ways that uh, approximate members' experiences. Now, emphasis here on the approximation is we can never claim to have identical experiences. Um, but with this in mind, we attended all three research sites, which allowed us to draw comparisons across events um, that shared features, but also um, that differed in, in many ways. Um, at the same time, this allowed us to document spatial, performative and discursive elements at play um, within these spaces. Um, our main ethnographic data collection methods consisted of note-taking, of jottings. Um, we observed a lot of public discourse through uh, sort of brochures and posters that these events would um, that these events would produce and distribute. Um, we also focused on students and adults' public statements and speeches in the spaces. Um, there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of announcements and statements that were made. Um, within the space and that's something that we looked out for. We also um, uh, had chats on the fly and, and quick discussions um, with, with young performers. Um, and so festivals, as they engage participants on a, um, on a multi-sensory level, we also uh, looked at visual elements, um, which we recorded through photography and also we access sort of post event um, media and and um, photographs that would be posted up after the event so that could be accessed online and it also allowed us to revisit some of the performances and get them in, in full detail just to make sure that we were seeing what we were seeing um, uh, another thing that uh, was quite handy at Polyfest is that um, since there was events that catered to school um, students, there were highly, uh, highly uniformed events, so it was relatively easy to discern which group, um, which school group um, these performers belonged to. Um, and 
that allowed us to monitor how they were moving through the space, where they would group, how they would interact with each other, who they would cheer on during performances. Um, so that was also another element that um, allowed us to monitor the, um, the dynamics within the space. Um, and then looking at all this data, we analyze it through a general inductive approach um, following uh, the suggestions of Thomas. Um, so the data was firstly um, coded, I mean, we used open coding to um, get some of the um, um, emergent themes and then as we went through and refined um, these themes we recoded everything to fit it into the, the categories that, um, that came up. Um, we acknowledge that this research has many blind spots and hidden biases and, and we realize that um, as we're completing this research we are only now beginning to see the type of questions that we could ask um, and follow up with uh, if, if we had the chance. Um, and we recognize that we cannot have a deep knowledge of all of the cultures that were present and that we were observing. Um, so therefore, inherently, we will have missed out on um, many important things and we acknowledge this. Um, we came in, and this is important to, to include also, is that we came in with assumptions into the festival space that it's actually quite a thin and superficial representation of culture. But being in the space um, shifted the this um, line of thought and something else entirely different um, emerged uh, and we sort of became aware of, of the significance that these festivals have for young people. Um, which is not to say that it's all perfect and that it's all rosy. We still have critiques of festivals um, and the students themselves that we've talked to have their own critiques. but. Um, we felt that festivals did provide a sort of temporary, perhaps utopian snapshot of new possibilities of how things could be in New Zealand. Okay. Uh, so of particular interest in the study um, is, was how cultural festivals could serve as a space for coming together and connecting as a group of ethnic minority youth through cultural performance. So through the observations of the three polyfests, um, we recognise that um, the intentionality of many of these performances as an ethnic spectacle with shared characteristics of tradition um, that represented a particular group um, allowed also the formation of new expressions of solidarity that moved beyond one ethnic group to encompass new people, um, to include um, multiple ethnic minority um, students as well as white students. Um, broadly, we saw two types of uh, solidarities emerging. So we've got the homogenous or single ethnic group solidarity, which is in line with uh, Durkheim's notion of mechanical solidarity. Um, and then we also had another one, which is the heterogeneous or um, trans or pan-ethnic group solidarity. Um, we also noted one further form of solidarity, which is school-based solidarity. Um, this is particular to the nature of school-aged cultural festivals, so the ones that are catered to um, school-aged um, children. Um, and this involved a sense of affiliation to a school community at the social, cultural um, and um, educational level, just in terms of um, the educational characteristics and ethos of that space. So school spirit was very much important. Um, so one of the key features that festivals offer is high visibility for a group of performers to present a shared collective affinity and um, ethnic identity. This uh, makes performances at multicultural festivals opportune avenues for positive representation um, and it allows groups to put aside differences which undoubtedly exist within the group um, to sort of present a homogenous or unified image of themselves and their identity. Um, at the three polyfests that we observed in 2018, there was a sense that being 
in the festival space um, was valued as a site of cultural affirmation. Um, so an example of this would be the Waitakere College Filipino group who, um, who described performing in the space as the best thing to happen to our culture. Um, another solo um, performer made a very strong statement about representing his culture and maintaining his Sikh Indian music tra tradition by drumming alone on stage. So this is something that he took up by himself. And he would have been the only one that performed solo. Everyone else would have been in, um, in quite large groups. Um, and he explained that, um, that it means a lot to be able to do this. So there's, there's value that these students are finding in being able to perform. Um, another um, chat that I had with uh, a performer from the One Tree Hill College um, Hawaiian group, uh, the, I, the, the, the performer stated that it felt really good being part of this group because it's the first time, as she says, I've been able to express my Hawaiian stuff. I've always done Cook Island or Māori. So there was also an important um, component to Polyfest, which is, which is that it allows, um, it allows groups to stand out as special and to announce a presence as a group which is different to already established and represented traditions at Polyfest, such as Puki Airangi and such as um, Māori, who all have their own stages. Um, so the diversity stage would allow those who may not be as um, strongly represented to come forward and to have, um, and to have a presence there. Um, and so apart from anchoring their presence to New Zealand, a lot of the performance would also explicitly refer their performances back to the traditions and the histories of their ancestral homelands. Um, one of the most illustrative examples of this is the pre-performance speech given by um, a representative from the Manurewa High School Kiribati Performance Group. Um, and they made a strong statement about their unity and about their presence as a, as a unified group in New Zealand. Um, despite their small numbers and obviously the environmental factors that um, that affect uh, Kiribati currently, which is the rising um, which are the rising sea levels. This group um, presented a performance that they themselves claim is more than just a milestone um, and that it, that it holds far more importance than that. Um, in their own words, uh, that's because our dance is a commemoration of the Butiraui ship, um, shipwreck that happened on January 18th, um, 2018 this year. We lost 73 people with only seven survivors. It was a great loss for our nation and it impacted us greatly. In our dance, we will be performing a traditional dance which is to let enemies know that we are here. We've interpreted this into a way to let others know that we as a country are here, together as one. We will then continue on to the Kawawa, a traditional war dance which demonstrates how powerful we are. Our final piece will be the Kabus, which will showcase what we have to offer the community. We will proudly represent Kiribati. We are here, we are one, we are Kiribati. Um, so clearly we see here um, a desire to both be present in New Zealand and to have, to have a space here, but without letting go of, of a history and a past and a homeland that's, that's both here and somewhere else at the same time. Um, and then as a counterpoint to these displays of unified homogenous ethnic solidarities, um, there were also many examples of hetero heterogeneous solidarities or solidarities which cut across differences um, with the potential to create new collectivities among youth. Um, this could be described as a sort of shared otherness or shared co-minority um, or co-minority status, which was explicitly um, referenced and referred to um, by MCs, both at Tutangata and at the ASB Polyfest um, diversity stage in 2018. Um, this is generally, this was referred to as um, brownness by MCs. Um, there was a recognition of that um, 
of that racial factor in the othering experienced by youth in New Zealand. So what we saw at Tutangata um, was um, a sort of counter narrative present and that was projected to everyone specifically by Honourable Elpita Williams Seo who uh, who promoted the four Bs um, which are brown, beautiful, brainy and bilingual um, and this was clearly a focus <clears throat> on brownness as being um, valued as being uh, as 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 capital as something that is important that should be maintained and that is in no way um a barrier but is um but is a way to a way to go forward and then there's a similar sentiment that was shared at the asb polyfest where the mc um addressed the audience um and acknowledged the minority position of brown youth, but at the same time, with the desire to elevate them. Um, and in the same vein, acknowledging, the, um, acknowledging those who were seen as showing interest in solidarity by engaging with the brown event. So this um, can be summed up by um, the MC's quote, which is, it's beautiful to be brown. I love being brown. If you're not brown, you have a brown heart. So there was the the announced collective of of brown youth in poly, at Polyfest, um, and then everyone else who participated was seen as as someone that's contributing to that. Uh, um, and this sort of collectivity was. Um, was significant to uh, a number of groups, and to them it was important to acknowledge that the the, the actual performance crews that um, that were on stage were made up of members from different backgrounds. So it was performance that was bringing all of these different groups together, and it allowed them to build something. Um, in the words of one of the performance, to build something that's more than just a group. Um, so this diversity and representation within the groups was valued and it was named and claimed um, uh, which can be illustrated by um, by one of the pre-performance statements from the Papatoe Toe High School Hawaiian group. Um, so they made a statement that we are the Hawaiian group from Papatoe High School. Um, so they were claiming the identity of the group and, uh, and referencing the school. But they go on to say, and today we will be performing two hula dances for you at different speeds. This shows the diversity in the entire performance because we have a mix of cultures presenting this dance. They vary from Fijian, Vietnamese, Cambodian, to Tongan, Samoan, and Māori. So they made sure that everyone that was present was included and was named. Um, which hints back at that shared sense of um, being other together. Uh, and this would also translate to the um, identification with the audience, which, um, which were almost all non-European. Um, Mackley Crump uh, into that describes um, this shared otherness as a possibility at festivals um, in his work on the Pacifica Festival. Um, and he states that another possibility is inter-diasporic contact, so that's something that um, these festivals allow, um, where other diasporic peoples who attend as cultural tourists may share a sense of solidarity or understanding with another group with whom they occupy a diasporic, non-majority, non-indigenous position. So we see potential indication of this happening throughout Polyfests we attended in 2018. Um, another prominent theme in the sphere of heterogen, her, um, <clears throat> sorry, heterogeneous solidarities was pan-ethnic solidarity. Um, in particular, we observed this in reference to Pacific, Indian, and African pan-ethnicities. Um, as an example of this, uh, of the six performances we saw at um, the ASB Polyfest diversity stage, they were from the African continent. Um, only one group was named specifically by country. 
and this was the Mount Roskill High School Ethiopian group. So they were the only ones that um, uh, defined themselves by country. And then the rest of the five groups that performed in 2018 were um, named African performances, or even more specifically, African fusion performances. Um, the Kelston Girls uh, College African group, which you can see in the slideshow over there, um, uh, illustrated this by acknowledging the Pan-African approach in representing the continent. So they go, we're offering moves from Nigeria, Ghana, Congo, and South Africa, um, wanting to show the strength of solidarity. Um, and this was reflected throughout the rest of um, the African performances um, who all presented a sort of coming together of different traditions um, showing as one group stated that we are diverse um, and this was all um, in the hopes of as another group stated to represent Africa so the idea was to represent uh, Africa as a unit but also in all its um, plurality um, Perhaps one of the most emblematic of the pan-ethnic solidarities seen as, uh, at ASB Polyfest um, was, was the One Tree Hill Fiji Indo-Chinese group. Um, so they were reflecting newly formed pan-solidarity um, and they explicitly performed a unity between the three major ethnic constituencies in Fiji um, in a way that other Fijian performance groups only symbolically hinted at um, through their pre-performance speeches. Um, this group in particular wrote a pan-Fijian identity and solidarity into being by presenting an imagined possibility of what this, um, of how this could manifest um, aesthetically and through performance. Um, so if you look at the, um, the picture there, um, visually the group functioned as a color-coded black, red and gold unit um, however, three different styles of costume, maybe even four, um, were present on stage, as you can see um, in the slide. Uh, you can see that they all share the same stage space, and even though they're all wearing different costumes, their dance moves are aligned, so they're in unison there um, through movement. Um, this group also cross boundaries in terms of performance, choosing not to section um, performances into separate sets for each performance tradition, which is something that other groups would do if you had a, <clears throat> um, let's say you had a Fiji Indo-Chinese performance group, they would have the Indian section, they would have the um, Chinese section, they would have the indigenous Fijian one. Um, this group did it differently. Uh, they had all the movements on stage at the same time, all the time. Um, and uh, instead of having three different types of, uh, at the same time, they were mixing music in a way that enabled uh, that enabled the movements to flow. So, so regardless of the music that was playing and what tradition it came from, all of the movements from the, the different ethnicities represented were there on stage together. They did, yeah, they did fusion. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the best, but they, they were the most intense fusion that you could see at the um, at the ASP Polyfest. Um, and their performance sort of accomplished what their pre-performance statement advertised, which is that we will bring you a Fiji and Chinese fusion dance reflecting three of the diverse cultures, Indian, Chinese, and Fijian, weaving together the, di um, the diverseness of cultural awareness. The culture of Fiji is a tapestry of indigenous Fijian, Indian, European, Chinese, and other nationalities. In this dance, we will also honor our past Indian ancestors and Chinese ancestors who brought their culture to Fiji in hopes um, to create a bright future. Not just their families, but also indigenous Fijians together, hand in hand, to prosper in the land known as Fiji, in the hopes of not losing their culture, but binding together the essence of being from Fiji. We present to you our fusion, so the above case um, is a strong example of what we hypothesize these festival spaces allow, which is to maintain, but also to reimagine identities, affiliations, and solidarities um, through performance. Okay. Um, so the last of 
the categories that we found among uh, heterogene uh, heterogeneous solidarities uh, is the expression of solidarity through Pākehā participation in ethnic minority cultural performance groups and spaces. Um, this was quite common at the diversity stage, especially among smaller ethnic minority performance groups um, who struggled to find the numbers of participants for their performances. Um, one of the examples for this was the Japanese group from St. Dominic's College, whose performance were predominantly white. Um, a second reason for Pākehā involvement um, was the sort of natural inclusion of friends in the performances. So generally, whoever you would be friends with, you were likely to perform with at, um, at, uh, at polyfests. Um, and this was something that was valued as positive and important, both by performers themselves, but also um, by external commentators. Um, Pākehā students uh, specifically talked about how this involvement was a form of inclusion um, and it allowed them to to learn about other cultures. Um, uh, a student from St. Dominic's Japanese group mentioned above um, stated that the motivation for participating in the group was to learn to be open to the world. Um, and another performer who was involved in the diocesan uh, Diocese and Girls Indian group performance um, described how she and her Pākehā friends um, felt welcomed all the time and it was good to try something different, to experience a different culture um, because everyone was so accepting um, and the group's very diverse. Um, one other Pākehā performer uh, from St. Dominic's Japanese group again um, uh, described how being involved in a really inclusive performance group reflected her experience of living in a really diverse community. Um, and so she said that, I'm so grateful I grew up in a multicultural society. Um, in fact, I don't know any different as it's all I know. So we see here um, a reflection of everyday living and the way in which this affects um, patterns in Pākehā participation at Polyfest. So this has to do with growing up in diverse communities as well as going to ethnically diverse schools. Um, and I'll hand over to Bronwyn now for some more stuff about school-based affiliation, which is interesting. Cool. So the last um, solidarity we'll talk about was the school solidarity, which um, occurred through the kind of competition that was run. So Tutangata and um, the Northern Regional Polyfest were not a competition. There was no prizes given. There was just one award for school spirit. But at um, ASP Polyfest, there were a ranking announced, there was prizes at the end, and it was a very intense competition with people turning up with t-shirts saying winners last year of Supreme Award, ASP Polyfest diversity stage kind of thing on their backs. Um, so one of the ways we saw this kind of intense school spirit emerging was through the kind of call outs as people were performing. And so schools such as Avondale College, which submitted 17 cultural performance groups um, would arrive and cheer for their groups with a lot of um, fervour. Um, and one quote we had from a young performer who had performed in the Fijian group from Otahu College said, it felt really good representing my school. I'd definitely perform again with them, but only from Otahu College it was kind of an aspect which um, kept them coming back. Um, so the diversity stage was off on its own and the other uh, stages were closer so some of the students felt that they wanted to be honoured more by their school to kind of be seen um, even though they often had a fear fear performance back in the school to display their um, events to each other. So just to wrap it up I want to draw together some of these threads of what we've been talking about here. Um, we saw uh, in many ways the stage used as a site of performance for claiming citizenship rights and citizenship in itself. Some of the students use this, the pre-performance statements to make a kind of claim to assert their position and to resist some of the racism which they had experienced in their lives. So for example, the Aori College Indian group shown here, um, just to let you know all the photos we were allowed to take uh, because we had a media pass at ASB Polyfest, but not at the other ones. So these are all from ASB Polyfest. Um, they described how 
tradition will always overpower Western influences and sit back now and enjoy our performance, Danivad. Um, and so it was kind of seen as a resistance to some of the dominant Western culture, which they defined as experiencing in their everyday lives. Another example was the soul drummer who was Sikh um, from James Cook High School. And the importance to him of this performance was that people discriminate and stuff lately. And this drumming shows that we're not actually what you think we are. We're actually pretty advanced and went on to do his quite superb um, drumming rendition. Um, so an idea we want to pull together towards the end um, draws from some of um, Victor Turner's ideas, an anthropologist, and some of his very, very early work in the 60s, um, where he talks about uh, festivals becoming a site where there's a discontinue, discontinuum of action, which entails a separation from the everyday, a spatial, temporal, or formal separation among people or a group of people. Um, and also how festivals can allow for a status reversal in which um, they can reinstate esteem for an ethnic minority group and give them a minor celebrity status, how, however fleetingly this might be, to, um, to elevate social position. And what we want to theorize is that festivals may be a form of counter space in society where they enable that kind of ethnic solidarity to be enhanced and consolidated and performed. And so the, the data we've shown talks about how students extensively talked about how this performance deepened their own ethnic identity but also their position as a cultural group in New Zealand society and showed in the words of the Kiribati group, we are here. Um, cultural festivals also allowed for these expressions of trans ethnic and pan ethnic identities to emerge. Um, a kind of counter space of shared solidarity through performance, but also through an affiliation, affiliation of being minority other together. It's beautiful to be brown, we're brown together. Um, this was illustrated through new groupings and mixing of young people as they performed, both ethnic minority youth, but also growing numbers of Pākehā young people being involved in that. Um, so schools provided a site of powerful new solidarities to enable um, togetherness to form and bringing these students of ethnic groups together. Finally, the festival stage was also a site of assertion of rights to counterforms of, of racism, such as the Sikh drummer. Um, who wanted to illustrate that we're pretty advanced and the Indo-Chinese Fijian group kind of um, reworked the tension in their own community in a new way on that stage. Um, so to conclude, we want to suggest that cultural festivals form a very significant role for enabling young ethnic minority groups to present themselves to very keen audiences in the way they wish to be represented. And it's exactly the separation from the ordinary that a festival allows, um, the kind of eventness of festivals that promote a state of radical openness, in O'Grady's words, to emerge. So this festival mode makes the festival space a covert space for politics of possibility in how you wish yourself to be perceived and who you wish to be affiliated with. Um, so thus, multicultural festivals can be a site of transformation of attitudes towards the self and most importantly, the other. We also highlight the potential for old solidarities to be maintained, for cultures to be maintained, but also for new solidarities to emerge in multicultural societies um, through which cultural festivals appear to be growing, not declining in popularity in New Zealand. So we'd be very grateful to get some feedback on what we've been working on um, and look forward to some questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Bronwyn and Mika. It's a really uh, great and interesting presentation. And I'll open up the floor immediately to um, the audience and see if there's questions and feedback for you. If you could please um, close your shared screen, that should enable us to see all the people who are actually present so we can take questions. How do we do that? Um, just I think it's at the top of the screen. Does that work? Did that do anything? Uh, no, now I can see your main screen. <laughs> okay. Um, I think there's an option to sh stop sharing screen. Okay. Let me do... Stop share. Oh, there, there, there you go. There, there. I'll um, just go back to that one. 
And where now is the... Um, you see the little... Yeah, stop sharing. That's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Cool. Well, I think we can see everyone is present. Okay. Any questions and feedback um, for Bronwyn and Nick? Robin. Uh, kia ora. That was fabulous. Um, I, uh, I used to teach at a very multicultural school in Wellington that had a big um, poly club. That was essentially a Samoan um, club that other groups within uh, the, the Polynesian kind of group affiliated with and not in different ways. But one of the things that really fascinated me about that was that the kind of skill that the girls brought to singing meant that they established a poly choir which um, allowed those um, uh, Samoan and other, other Pacific Island students to be part of what was understood to be really deeply mainstream white um, schooling by being part of the choir world. Um, and that, I think, would be... Uh, it'd be really interesting to explore the extent to which that is also happening alongside these kind of cultural festivals that are valorising home culture, but the extent to which these highly skilled performers then have options within the school kind of context for doing for doing other things. Yeah, that's it's definitely that's definitely a, a, something that you'll observe. Throughout high schools, that's something that was true for in, in, in both of the high schools that I went to. So both in Heritonga College and in, at Hart Valley High School, you would have the poly group as the baseline that would then have offshoots in barbershop in, 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 in choirs and other, um, other performance groups. Um, and it would go into hip hop and it would even encompass sports. So like everyone that I went to poly group with, um, we also played volleyball together, so that that formed a, a community that then branched into into different things. But yeah, it does. It, there's a there's an interaction there between that sort of community and then other um, and other art forms. I have a question that kind of follows on from that. I'm doing some research on. Um, orchestral music education programs which mainly work with brown kids in Porirua and a question I was asked just last week is is that ethical for brown kids to be playing orchestral music mm -hmm. um, so I get the impression that there are certain kinds of performing that brown kids are not supposed to be doing mm -hmm. is so uh, is this the only way they can you know, that's just a question I'm yeah, thinking yeah. through at the moment. Like, mm -hmm. if they play the violin um, and they excel at it, so some of the kids in the yeah. orchestra do play, they are in kapahaka, they do really well in sport, they're excelling at violin, but members of the public are a little bit like, well, you should just be sticking to your brown things, yeah. <laughs> which I yeah. find problematic. Yeah, that was one of, one of my friends who was in jazz at Vic was talking about how... Um, there's sometimes you can you have to play the you have to always play the thin line between between playing your own music and what you feel is the right thing but also knowing that you're in the white man's game when you enter jazz spaces which is weird that that would even be thought of as a as a white space yes um but it is because that's been gentrified um uh, as well as as, um, as well as um, orchestral music, um, but there's a there's a weird thing going on where where we've categorized things too narrowly into what can be brown, um, and and I think the role of music is to transcend those boundaries, to push them, to show that they're actually malleable, that there's a whole bunch of things that 
<laughs> brown kids can do and that they don't have to be on white people's terms. Mm -hmm. They don't. So this, the, I, I found that, that you have, you have poly, the poly clubs as the baseline of where we maintain culture and this is our thing but there's also a whole bunch of other things that are also our thing mm -hmm. and we can we can perform there and 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 then they they slowly become brown things as well i think barbershop is is something that has had a fun trajectory of being primarily something that's in uh, that's performed on the fly in in African American barbershops in 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 the United States, and then that entered into the white mainstream, and then now it's back as as this heavily poly thing in New Zealand. So like the the best barbershop crews come out of Aotea College and out of um, Mana College and, and schools that are predominantly brown. So I don't know. I feel like music and performance is spaces with things you, you can do things like that which is not to say that music is the be all and end all obviously there's other avenues where, where success and and advancement can um i think one other yeah. thing we saw that we didn't show here was the fusion that happens between traditional mm. culture and contemporary and so on the diversity stage they didn't have to be quite so strict as some of the other stages um, to do their traditional performances. So we saw quite a lot of blending of new Bollywood performance with, um, you know, traditional performance and so on. And there was something that, new possibilities that emerge as well, um, that is worth noticing, um, yeah, as, as culture is always dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael? Oh, hi. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I wanted to follow up on Lorena's point uh, or question and the discussion that resulted from that. Um, it seems to me that um, the boundaries that we're talking about here between Western and Polynesian and so on are often incredibly arbitrary. Yeah. So, for example, if you were to press most of the Pacific Islanders that I know about whether their church music is Western or not, I think you'd get a rather interesting response, uh, even though clearly it comes out of that tradition. Uh, and that raises for me the issue about tradition, which is often, I think, ignored in these discussions, which is uh, the tradition that we hear being talked about in these contexts is itself uh, an incredibly modern thing. It's, it's a, a discursive construction that allows people to contrast themselves to Westernness, modernity, whatever, even though they will use all the trappings of modernity to foster that tradition. Uh, I've got a lot of possible avenues for looking at this, but it struck me that one of the interesting ways of trying to monitor what is going on is through social media, because I suspect that there's gigabytes of data generated by all of these festivals on Facebook and, and those sorts of uh, pages. And uh, the, the young people, including the performers and the audience members, are incredibly skilled at generating and commenting on this kind of data. So I'm wondering if it might be possible to fold some of that stuff into your research. You may be doing it already, but I didn't hear you comment on that. So yeah, just a, a few points to think. Oh, the other thing uh, that I also might mention is that there's a very interesting literature on carnival in anthropology, which I think would be very useful for you to explore if you haven't done so already. Um, you mean the, the Rio Carnival? Well, there's so many kinds of carnival around the place. There's, yes, there are the ones in Europe, there's the ones in South America, there are the ones in the West Indies, uh, and probably at, well, Mardi Gras in the United States. Um, all of them have interesting features that link to Turner's analysis of uh, status reversal and transformativeness and so on and so forth. So yeah, just a, a bunch of um, 
issues there that might be worth thinking about and which um, might lead to some interesting uh, collaborations between you and other people working in related spaces. Yeah, I think a lot of, of background reading focused on things such as the Notting Hill Festival that you have in, in London and, and, the, Queens. and the, yeah, the um, uh, cultural festivals in Queens and New York, um, the folklorama in, in, uh, in Canada. Um, and so, I mean, we've talked about tradition and just in the way that the youth has named it and claimed it at, um, at Polyfest, but there's no doubt in my mind that they're writing tradition the whole time through. I mean, I don't even know where I would begin on debating what's traditional and what's, how they're staging tradition or, 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 or authenticity for that matter. So what, um, I don't really have an answer for that, but I feel like one of the ways in which we could explain what's happening here is that they're doing something that's very their own and very local. Um, and a, a, a different component of, of, of this research I've, I've looked at through um, ethnomusicological perspectives and some of some of the ways in which, for example, the, the, these um, students have sampled music and the things that they've used are quite local. So you'll see um, an, an Indian performance that's described as a traditional Indian performance, whatever that means. Um, but you would have in the same, in the, the space of, of the five minutes that they had to perform, is that how, how long they would have, something like that. Um, they would they would have a Gujarati performance, a Punjabi performance, some Bhangra, some um, some new Bollywood things, and then they would enter Savages Freaks, which is very South Auckland and it's very very New Zealand. Um, so I I think I think more than anything, new traditions are emerging now, new ways of being Kiwi, new ways of being. Kiwi Indian or Kiwi Samoan or um, or a bunch of those different things because these kids are growing up together so they're, they're sampling each other's things um, they're sampling each other's music and art form and, and they're talking to each other so it, it, what emerges as tradition remains to be seen <laughs> yeah Any other questions? Yeah, um, Rota. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the very interesting presentation. Um, the concept talking about that you talked about the school solidarity was very interesting, as uh, it um, not only created a sense of solidarity in terms of in relation to the sense of belonging to the school, but school as a like a spatial setting, as a um, place. Uh, creates that sense of belonging and identity for students um, in relation to their school. My question is that, so if we look at uh, these cultural festivals uh, as events, as, 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 as places um, to actually make some practices happen in, the, in, in a place, how, have you seen anything regarding memories uh, mm -hmm. from an event and how it affected the, 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 the performers to actually um, attend the next event, the next cultural festival. And, and because that memory contributes that sense of belonging as well. So how did you see that? Um, I was, can I add to that question? Because I had a very similar question with regards to memory, because some of the key terms that caught my attention were tradition counter space and commemoration, I think, somewhere in the presentation. And I wonder if, uh, just to add to your question, Roja, if something like counter memory might be an interesting thing to look at, because we are talking about, mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking back in a sense and building uh, ethnic sort of uh, solidarity across ethnic groups. And I wonder if that might be an interesting sort of thing to think about. Yeah. Just a couple of um, responses to that. 
Um, we did have students talking about that this was the fifth time they'd attended. This was, you know, multiple, multiple, multiple attendance. And um, my work back in the school, so I've been working in three schools that all send um, dozens of performers every year, of groups of performers. Um, the students would say to me, you know, this year I did some on group. Um, they were a bit strict, so next year I'm going to go and support the new ANs who need some more numbers. Um, and a Malaysian student, I remember, said, I do this every single year. Um, she's from Epsom Girls Grammar. Uh, because of what it means to me for the community of being together every time we um, practice and perform and we come back every year for that. So there's a short-term short school memory of year after year. Most of the students who started in their young years continue every year, partly because you get a day off school. Um, but other schools are so into it that they'll shut the whole school for the day, like Papatoi High, and the entire school will go um, to support. And then the other thing you touched on about memories of commemoration, um, we mentioned that with a Kiribati group commemorating past events and so on. This was quite, um, these are memories passed down through generations that sometimes they're enacting. The F Filipino group talked about, um, you know, battles in the past that then they were enacting today. And these are passed down through cultural oral traditions and through ongoing performance traditions. So I think there's something that does go back a long way in terms of memory in these performances as well that's really worth noting. Um, if there's no immediate questions, I'd like to ask something and um, actually Adama, my colleague, had to leave but she left a comment and uh, it kind of relates to the question I had so I'll just use hers <laughs> and read it out to you and it relates, I think, it's quite complex, but it relates mainly to your theorization of solidarity um, and the theories you're drawing on. So, Durkheim, so I'm just going to read it out for you. Um, she says, You discuss the performance as demonstrating solidarity. There's an assumption underpinning, sol underpinning solidarity that it is the coming together of distinct paths. Given that the cultures involved are usually described as collectivist cultures, the performance may not be solidarity so much as an expression of specific collective identities. Um, the research might be strengthened by including an analysis of Pacific ontologies, so I guess that's a getting away from Durkheim in a way, and consideration of concepts such as kutahitanga and panongatanga. Also an important feature of this type of cultural festival is that they're driven by the communities themselves as opposed to by the council or government, which provides an opportunity to subvert the colonial lens. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick up on that first um, and hand over to Mika. Um, thank you for that comment. I think it's quite insightful and we're very aware that what looks like solidarity may be quite a temporary, um, a very transitory affiliation and we were aware as, as we're theorizing of that and so these groups come together for quite a small moment and it may not actually signify deep relationships so we're quite conscious of that um, and in the narratives we heard and many of the things we showed you there was a sense of collectivity and bonding um, demonstrated um, but we're quite aware that that may be quite thin as well um, mm. So there's that element um, that we can acknowledge. And I think um, we possibly would need to do more sustained work with individual um, performers to talk about just how deep that went. One of the examples um, from a school uh, that I've been working in, they decided to make the Polyfest the starting point of a much more sustained approach to building cultural community within the school. So the Tongan group, the Samoan group continued throughout the whole year and as a way to counter the quite temporary nature of the performance. Um, and so they had mentoring brought into these groups and the people that helped them perform initially in the background were then brought in as mentors for the rest of the year. And this has been one of the most powerful um, uh, developments in the school for encouraging academic performance, encouraging leadership, uh, and using that initial um, entree as a performance for Polyfest as the, the vehicle for this. So I think I agree completely that it could be quite thin forms of solidarity we saw at times, 
Um, and yeah, there's a whole lot of complexity we could talk about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to touch on that because that is definitely one of the doubts I personally have when looking at this is, is this actually solidarity or is it just reflecting a way of being that's that, that's um, that's quite, because we look at it as, as, as this emergent new thing, but the, in many cases, this is just the, the way things are. You talk about kotaitanga and which is an inherent oneness and a looking at the world that includes everyone as family regardless so there's that bridging across difference or not even necessarily a bridging across difference but just by being around me we're together and we're doing this thing together um and it's actually quite difficult to discern when 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 that is happening and when it's not happening when it's act, a, a sort of more active form of solidarity where we're doing something and we acknowledge the world different but we're going to come together for the purpose of um this thing that we're doing now i uh, i i think if we had another year to go through this then we would generate better questions and and look at things but um but for now i think yeah it's important it's important to include that perspective because it's it's something that that's specific to um, Pacifica culture and 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 and, and to um, Maori tanga. So, so I'd like to thank Karma for bringing that up because it's very very important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's sort of. I know what you mean about having more time and looking at different angles and <laughs> uh, perspectives to to theorize this. But I think I think there is an interesting point about whether we see these groups, as she says, as distinct parts, or actually part of a collective identity. I was interested in what other, you said there were other questions coming up. You said that earlier and you just said it now. I'm kind of curious to hear what you thought uh, whilst you were doing the research, uh, what else you would have liked to ask? Um, I, I would, I think I would like to have more in this discussion because now I only know what I saw at the, at the Polyfest. Um, I would like to have more time to go into schools and to talk more deeply with um, with the students about how they went about selecting their performance um, pieces. How did they choose the moves to perform at a given time? Why were they choosing those moves? How were they um, curating the music? Who were they sampling? Why did they choose to sample that? Because um, I can only talk about things that I think I recognize. And there's other blind spots that I have um, that could be clarified by um, by having in-depth discussions, probably focus groups of, of of some sorts, and maybe a, a more narrow focus on one particular group, because what we have now is a whole array of different forms of cultural expressions um, that are not only based in a variety of, of, of backgrounds in terms of ancestral homelands but are also reflecting a whole um, range of localities so a performance from Avondale is never going to be it's it's not going to be the same it's going to be talking about different things than a performance from Westlake Gills for example Okay. So I would, I would, I would like to know what's going on in there, and and there maybe I could find the difference between solidarity and and what could be seen as just a, um, a representation of an already existing collective identity. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Uh, sorry. I just, oh, oh, sorry, here you go. I just wanted to ask if we could um, ensure some way of uh, getting the email addresses of the contributors, the speakers today, uh, in order to carry on some of this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can put you in touch. Um, Roger? 
Yeah, I actually I want to add just a very short comment to what Arama um, was commenting about uh, solidarity. I um, I think if please correct me if I if I'm wrong, but somewhere in one of your slides you. Uh, mentioned something about literature on cultural festival as opportunities for cultural maintenance, community, and making citizenship. Um, I'm concerned if if raising citizenship may create contradictions with what you talked about, trans ethnic heterogeneity, um, and as citizenship coming from that universal kind of concept, universal definition, universal categorization of um, citizens. Uh, how do you put these two different things as, as like heterogeneity and then talking about citizenship in the same place? Um, yeah, thank you for that question. We've theorized citizenship when we talk about it like that in quite a loose term, not just the status of owning a passport or um, being a member of um, a country, but the claim of belonging um, to that place. So um, I think when we're talking about claiming citizenship at the very outset, it's claiming um, a being in the community rather than um, an elevated status of, of all the rights holding kind of things that citizens go with. So an example that comes to mind was a Japanese group from Avondale College who talked about all through the year, um, this Japanese student said he just felt like everyone else, but at Polyfest, when he performs on stage, that is the one day everyone looked at him and gave him that attention for being Japanese in New Zealand. So there was a, a kind of, um, in terms of citizenship, a status which is achieved by the fact that people are watching you, applauding and recognizing you being there, that um, meant a lot to him. Uh, so I'm not quite sure if I'm answering it right, but in terms of identity, this, the stage provided um, an exposure to an individual that gave him some affirmation in this role as a Kiwi um, Japanese student. Um, anything else from you? I just, I, I, uh, I feel like the, maybe the crux of, the, of our discussion of citizenship is that um, if you're not performing and if you're not there and if you're not, uh, it's, it's the actual visibility and the representation that creates citizenship. So we are here in New Zealand and that um, that's more important rather than the, the so the, the fact that we're here is good enough um, and and being there and having everyone see you and recognize you um, is what uh, is think about that. I think yeah I think it's like a site of recognition more than um, Perhaps how we understand citizenship traditionally. Yeah. yeah. So it's allowing for different. It's allowing basically. It's a, it's citizenship, but with an allowance for difference. Like I am allowed to be Japanese and a New Zealander, rather than rather than um we're trying to get into a sort of homogenous um idea of what New Zealand is. So it's like if you're performing at Polyfest, you're performing um another way of being in new zealand that, that doesn't require you to sacrifice um any parts of yourself yeah does that sort of answer yeah no thank you yeah. okay we're just about out of time so if this any last questions or comments to wrap up? No, okay, it doesn't look like it. Um, okay, then um, let me in thanking uh, Bronwyn and Mika for a really great presentation. Um, and I thank you all for coming along and uh, listening and giving feedback and asking questions. And I think it's always a useful um, setting for discussing work in progress, right, and developing ideas. So. Um, Thank you all, and uh, we've got one more session this year.
and then we'll be sending out a new call for <laughs> presenters probably for next year. Um, okay, thanks very much. See you all soon. Have a good day. <laughs>